Yeah, that's right, we are back. <laughs> Today, I'm gonna to be talking about the Humble Axle Store. So I thought I'd outline the 10 phases I've gone through whilst trying to learn the Axle Store. Now, I reckon this is one of the harder things I've ever tried to learn. I'd stick it right up there with the windsurfing calf chibe. And I reckon the reason for this is it's got so many component pieces that all need to happen in order, in the moment, and if any one of them goes a bit on the wonk, the whole thing can be kaput. Okay, approaching the transition, I found I needed just the right speed. That needed to be combined with just the right pump. Coming up, manual the front wheels off while slightly turning your back to the coping, that's pretty scary. Get that back wheel hooked on and execute a little 90 degree pivot. Get the front truck on. Again, standing and committing to that coping, I found was pretty scary. And then once balanced there, it's time to come back in. So again, bring the front wheels off, pivot on that back wheel, little 90 degrees, back down, commit your weight, <laughs> bend your knees and ride away. There is a lot going on. So for phase one, I decided to concentrate my efforts on a flat bank. My rationale here was just to try and get the movements of doing that little 90 degree pivot at the top without the worry of getting tangled up on any coping. Once I got the feeling dialed in on the flat bank, it was time to enter into phase two. Now I did try a few attempts <laughs> going up on a small quarter pipe with coping and oh my gosh, all hell broke loose. And it also occurred to me that if I did luckily get into an axle stall position, I had no idea how to come back in safely. So I decided for phase two to concentrate on the re-entry. Now at this point, it's probably worth talking through the various permutations for the lock-in. I prefer the cross lock, which is where the back heel side wheel is on the coping and the front toe side wheel is up against the coping and that provides a bit of stability. It also means that that heel side wheel is just on the coping ready to come back in when you axle forwards. I also like to use this cross lock method for my 50-50 grinds. So I've tried to standardize the two, go cross lock on the axle stall and also cross lock for the backside 50-50. The next permutation is to have both heel side wheels jammed down on the coping with the toe side wheels dangling off. And I find that one works really well when the coping is proud. Also on the pull coping, that 50-50 grind tends to really zip. And the guys that use both heel side wheels on the coping, <laughs> they whistle along. I've also noticed that the guys that do 50-50s on vert tend to favor just having the heel side wheels on the coping. The next permutation is to have both toe side wheels up against the coping. Now this one can feel a little bit committed when you come back in, but I found that as long as you put all your weight on your back toe, that pivots the board in and also helps to clear that heel side wheel. Now this one puts you right up on top of the coping and my mate Pai Kasari gets really great results out of his 50-50 grind, standing right up there with the two toe side wheels jammed up against the coping. I also find that this locking works well when doing the fakey backside axle stall because you can sort of rush the trucks up on the coping and push hard against those toe side wheels and then coming back in it's just a case of pushing hard on the toe Whew, clear that back heel side wheel the final permutation is a bit more of a rarity and that's to have the back toe side wheel up against the coping and the front heel side wheel jammed onto the coping for a sort of reverse cross lock now my mate Neil Hester gets great results out of his backside 50-50 grinds on curved pull coping with this cross lock method. And it could also be a good step en route to the backside Smith store where the back toe side wheel is up against the coping, but that front foot dips over the coping so that the side of the board is rested on the coping as opposed to that front heel side wheel. So for coming back in, I found a bit of commitment was necessary at this point, I'd learned to drop in, so I understood how to commit forwards. And one of the key things I found when coming off the coping was to really bring that front shoulder forwards into the turn. That helped with the 90 degree pivot off of the coping. And also for my back foot, I needed to shift my pressure from the heel to the toe just as I came in. This took me a while to work out. To start with, I was finding I was hanging up on the coping because I just kept all my pressure on the heel side wheel and that was snagging. I think the common advice is to nudge that heel side wheel across onto the coping to stop the hang up. But I was still finding a way to hang up and hook getting pitched to the flat is pretty emotional. So the trick with that heel side wheel was not so much having it across onto the coping, 
but more importantly transferring the pressure from the heel to the toe on the back foot as I pivoted off. I think I'm a bit of a weirdo, but I actually found that having two toe side wheels against the coping was safer to start with, because it really forced me to put all my pressure on the toe side wheel, and that cleared the heel side wheel every time. So once I felt more comfortable about coming back in, it was time to enter phase three, which was trying to get up the coping and hooked in on the top, and oh my goodness, I found this pretty scary. It took me loads of attempts, and the thing that really helped me to get into the stall was to try and aim right up the transition. So almost feeling like a bit of an alley-oop up the transition. I was finding to start with, I was just coming across and that was leading me to not commit to the pivot. And I kept on coming up with the trucks on the top of the ramp. So in a sort of feeble position. This was a common mistake that I would make for months and months and I couldn't work out why I couldn't get the trucks right round onto the coping. And of course the solution was my old friend the front shoulder. So just committing to having those shoulders in line with the coping was what would bring the trucks round onto the coping. Once I was hooked in there, I managed to come back in, offer my first one after weeks of trying and the celebration pretty embarrassing to look back on. But I found I had no choice in the amount of stoke I felt and therefore the amount I needed to claim it. Now in phase four, I started getting a few scrappy ones, but I kept on coming up against the same problems. Either coming in too fast, doing too much pump, and flying out the top, or getting into the stall, but whoa, coming off the back of the board, too much centrifugal force on the pivot. Also that problem of coming up with the trucks still on the deck, so feeble, which happened an awful lot. And it was just a case of practicing and tinkering with it, trying to go straight up the ramp, trying to get the front wheels off as early as possible so they didn't clip the coping, trying to trust in that back heel side wheel finding the coping, ready to pivot round. And the most important thing, looking with the head, committing with the shoulder and getting into that stall. Now at this point, I started to get a few reasonably clean ones on the little three foot quarter pipe and I decided to rush ahead and see if I could travel along and do a bit of a backside 50-50 grind. Now the backside 50-50 grind was a source of much frustration and I think it's probably the only time I've got angry at skateboarding. I found I encountered all the same problems with the 50-50 grind as I did with the axle stall and the two are really closely linked. I found that if I did get locked into the 50-50 grind, I'd be right there on top and I'd have to make a decision as to whether to come back in off of the tow wheel or to correct the truck, put it across and then come back in. And I did this for quite a while. It doesn't make for a very fluid or stylish looking 50-50 grind, just recorrecting that back truck halfway through the grind. And that brought me on to my mini breakthrough that I had in phase seven. So for phase seven, I decided to learn the backside pivot, which is to come up, put the back truck on the coping and go all the way round without the axle stall bit straight back in. Now for this to work, I found the emphasis was on following through with my front shoulder. And that was the thing I was struggling with on the axle stall and the 50-50 grind. And also for a smooth backside pivot, I found I needed to stay inside the ramp. So keep my body nice and straight, not break at the waist, and just stay inside the ramp. And that helped the board to pivot round and also for me to re-enter nice and smoothly. Now I did find when I tried a few of these backside pivots, that I was coming off balance and going into an axle stall. But the axle stalls that I made during the backside pivot attempts felt a lot better because there was virtually no pressure on that front foot as it came round. It was just a little dab on the coping and then my shoulder was following through anyway. So instead of there being a definite entry stall and re-entry, it was more of a fluid manoeuvre. So for phase eight, I decided to learn the feeble stall. Now my rationale here was I kept on coming up a little bit feeble so I may as well learn to bring those back in. And in a mini ramp session, I wouldn't lose my go. I could cash in on those rubbish attempts and still make it back into the ramp. Now the feeble stall is a little bit different to a rubbish axle stall. It's a bit more committed and I really like to do them so that the board is right up on a wonk. All the pressure is on my back heel side wheel and only the rail of the board or the front wheel is touching the deck. I also work these up to a feeble grind in the pool and that gave me even more understanding of the role of the shoulder and also the commitment required to bring that board right back in. 
This felt more like a rock and roll than an axle stall because the board was right cooked out over the coping and then I needed to bring that all the way back in more than 90 degrees. To boost the consistency, I worked on a couple of drills. The first one was to alternate front side axle stalls with the backside axle stall. And the second one was to try and do 10 backside axle stalls in a row. So for phase nine, it was all about taking it into bigger transitions. I find there's a definite step up between three and four foot ramps and then going up to five, six, seven foot ramps. And with the axle stall, it definitely felt like a different trick. The amount of commitment required to <laughs> turn pack side and hope that everything was gonna lock in and also to come back in off the axles, oh my gosh. I went back and repeated my process of learning the axle in first and I found I could get that up to quite big ramps. Eventually started axling in off the vert and I found that preferable to doing the tail drop to start with because I'm rubbish at doing the drop in. I have since managed to work on my drop in on vert and I now find that preferable than doing the axle drop. I also worked on trying to speed up the transition between the stall and coming back in, try and make it a fluid movement. And the two things that helped me with that was number one, standing more inside the ramp. So leaning into the ramp and not breaking at the waist. Something that helped me with my 50-50 grinds was trying to keep my body and my core tight. When I managed to get it right, it does make for a lengthy 50-50 grind and also a much smoother axle stall. So for phase 10, it was time to work on some variations. The first one I worked on was the blunt to backside axle stall. And I found oh, that one could be pretty emotional if it went wrong, but it felt really nice when it went right. I also worked on the early grab air to axle stall. And to start with that felt super committed to try and land right on the coping on the trucks and <laughs> try and hold on to everything. But again, that one felt super fun. I also worked on the fakie backside axle stall. So coming in fakie and then pivoting backwards on the coping and also the fakie backside feeble stall. So that's a bit of a twist of the hips with that one. And that one also feels oh, pretty nice when you lock it in. With the fakie backside axle stall, I find sometimes I can cross lock them and sometimes it just razzes right up to those two toe side wheels being on the coping. Then I can just come back in. I also worked on learning the fakie backside Smith stall. Again, when that one goes wrong, <laughs> it's pretty emotional, but it does feel nice and it's sort of related to the axle stall. I also tinkered with the idea of sticking a rail stand in the middle of the axle stall. So coming in fakie, up onto that backside axle stall, up onto the rail stand, and then a bit of a leap of faith, whew, back onto the coping and back in. I also learned the fakie backside 50-50 grind. So come in fakie, scoot across that coping backwards, and then back in. To finish off for a fun challenge, I decided to test out my axle stall technique by taking it to a spine and using the axle stall for a spine transfer. And oh, oh my goodness, it's fair to say that all hell broke loose. There are so many different opportunities to come a cropper when working on a spine, but eventually I managed to get that axle stall over the top of the spine. Oh my gosh. Well, that's it for this video on the axle stall. I did a similar video on the rock fakie, and I think just as with the rock fakie, I'm gonna to continue to refine my axle stall. It's in no way a finished article. I think in a nutshell, the key points that have helped me get remotely consistent are to manual the front wheels nice and high in the air, bring those shoulders round so that they're in line with the coping and I'm looking back where I wanna go, try and keep my body straight, my core tight, and also my body more inside the transition than I think I need to. And coming back in, again, really pivot that shoulder through, try and get smoothly off the coping, keeping my foot pressures correct to avoid the hang up. If you're new to the channel, feel free to hit subscribe. I make new videos every week. You can also follow me on Instagram, at John Bishop Skate. As ever, my name's been John Bishop, and I'm a middle-aged guy learning how to skate.